It's certainly a privilege to be here this morning. We could have been elsewhere. We could have been on lockdown. But thanks be to God, we are here this morning. And just for a couple of minutes or so, I just want to quickly examine the cross. And for this, I want to look at that song written by Mr. Isaac Watts in 1707. And the first verse reads like this. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the prince of glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and poor contempt on my pride. Mr. Watts, he was the eldest of nine children, born in Southampton, England. He learned Latin at the age of five, Greek at nine, French at 11, and Hebrew at 13. Bright young lad, isn't he? And I, Mr. Mr. Watts surveyed that cross. And when we look at that word survey, survey means to examine carefully, to view with a scrutinizing eye, to inspect, to look carefully and thoroughly at something or someone, especially so as to appraise them. So for us, what makes this cross so wondrous? Mr. Watts saw it as wondrous, and I believe that because all of you are here, you too see it as wondrous as, as well. So let me highlight some of the points that I believe for you and for me that made this cross so wondrous. Without this cross, we know there can be no reconciliation or forgiveness of sins. True? Without that cross, there could have been no forgiveness of sins. We recognize that in the beginning, when man created, when God created man, sorry, that sin came into this world through the, what we refer to as the first Adam. But it's through the second Adam that we now have the gift of eternal life. Through the first Adam, sin crept into the world. Well, Adam and Eve, since women don't want to be left out. Sin came into the world. And it was because of this sin that they had committed, there was a judgment pronounced on man. And man was condemned to die. But thanks be to God, through that cross, through the blood that was shed that we sang about just now, man now has a second opportunity of gaining eternal life. Laws were also nailed to that cross. The days of the do's and do nots were nailed to that cross. There were so many things that we could and could not do. So many things to remember. What we had to do, how we had to do it, the way we should do it, all of these things. But Christ came and nailed that also to the cross. He became the great high priest. No more do we have to slay the lamb anymore. But as we say, he has now taken the place of that lamb. We now can enter the, the holy of holies on our own. We don't require any lamb, any bullock, any doves, but we can now freely approach that throne of grace. Isn't that something to be thankful for this morning? Thanks be to God through that cross. The cross enabled him to be listed, lifted physically. It suspended his body and the blood as it dripped 
from his body that was shed for us the cross played a part in that and as this cross was lifted up it has spiritual implications because John chapter 12 reminds us that as he is lifted up he will draw some men a few men all men unto him so the cross played an important role because as it hoisted him into the air it drew all of us men back then and women also men and women of today if he is lifted up as he was lifted up all men will be drawn unto him we too also have this cross to bear we also play a role because we the responsibility is also placed on us to continue to lift up the name of jesus so that men will and women will be continued to be drawn unto him mr watt surveyed the cross he examined it and because of his severe his examination he went on to write many hymns we too as we survey the cross for ourselves what hymns are we going to write what poets, poems are we going to declare what words are we going to leave behind the cross is wondrous to all who survey it this morning is a personal question are you surveying this the cross this morning are you surveying that cross for those who are surveying the cross we can see changed lives we can see a more glorious and victorious living do we continue to surveil this cross or do we take the stance as those who say as foolishness according to first corinthians this morning survey this cross carefully examine it inspect it see what it continues to do for you the blood the body that is suspended be upon her and god will continue to also add his blessings to you may god continue to bless you this morning keep surveying that cross Amen. I, I really don't know about you, but this chapter in the history of the church, the crucifixion, is so significant that the more we hear it, the fresher it seemed to be. Matthew 27, from verse 20 to 22, from the New Living Translation says to us, Meanwhile, the leading priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas to be released and for Jesus to be put. 
So the governor asked again, which of these two men do you want me to release to you? The crowd shouted back, Barabbas. Pilate responded, then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? They shouted back, crucify him. For a few minutes, I want to talk to us about the crucifixion. And I think that if we really understood the magnitude of the crucifixion, we would have a fresh appreciation for Christ, for the cross, for the finished work of Calvary. The crucifixion as a means of punishment was not only done by the Romans, they perfected it. The Babylonians and the Persians used crucifixion as a means of punishing persons who would have done wrong. What they would have done is a certain type of person would receive that punishment. So if you created any problems in terms of seeking to overthrow the government, crucifixion was for you. If you were a runaway slave, crucifixion was for you. So no wonder, even though Barabbas was deserving of crucifixion, they were saying, give us Barabbas. Crucify Jesus. The custom, nothing new on the sun, the custom was to release a prisoner at the feast. So every time the feast was celebrated, a prisoner was to be released. You know, in um, certain countries, um, the president would release prisoners. Um, other leaders would release prisoners. A similar thing was done in that time. When it comes to crucifixion and the, and, and the process of one being crucified, it was not only painful, but it was a terrible way to die. We are told before a person was crucified, they were stripped naked and beaten. I'm sure the seniors would be of the cat and nine tail. The whip that was used as it was referred to, the fedulum as some would call it, or the scourging whip had some balls attached to it that were not in any particular shape. But when you were beaten with the scourging whip, it took flesh. So could you imagine Jesus Christ being beaten by the scourging whip and pieces of flesh coming from his body for you and for me. We are told that if you were a strong person, it could have taken as long as 13 hours before you passed before you expire, before you die. Jesus Christ died in six hours. Was he weak? No. It was to fulfill prophecy. So hear this. There was a concern. Pilate's wife sent a message and said, listen, I have suffered much during the night in a dream because of this man, 
do not trouble him leave that a concern that she had and she passed it to pilot and pilot was struggling as to how to deal with this and he pushed what shall I do with this innocent man and the crowd constantly saying crucify him crucify him so you, ha you have the, the, the concern that, that she had that she passed on to him in relation to Jesus Christ not only was there a concern but there was a charge that was leveled at him he claimed to be king of the Jews no that, that's that's interesting do you recall when the wise men were seeking Jesus and they said we are looking for the king of the Jews Herod got upset angry mad when you find him come back and let me know so that I may go and worship him now in relation to crucifixion when the charge was leveled we are told that it was placed over the head of the person so you would see or you would read there was an inscription king of the Jews that was the charge that was level before Jesus Christ. As it relates to the same crucifixion, you have the concern that she had. You have not only the concern, but the charge. But when we take a closer look at crucifixion, you'll realize that part of the problem to ensure that death was fast was to break the legs of the individual so what they were doing is as brother Ryan said you would have been hoisted but as you would have been there with your legs broken etc you could not really stretch But the good news is, again, the fulfillment of prophecy, not one of his legs were broken. We have every reason to rejoice in this Christ who died a painful death for you and for me. You have the concern. You have the charge. There was also a challenge. How are we going to work this out in terms of preventing those who were viewing, preventing those who were on the scene from rioting? And that is why Barabbas was released and Jesus was crucified there was a challenge because it came to memory what Jesus would have said destroy this temple and in three days time I'll raise it up there was a challenge because Jesus said in capsule form as we sing ever so often no grave no grave can hold my body down my friends when we think of Good Friday we think sometimes of tradition I want to say to us today it is more than tradition 
there was purpose to the pain. Let me say that again. There was purpose to the pain. Jesus' Jesus's death had purpose. And even though he endured pain, there was still purpose. I want to say to you today, your life has purpose. And even though you may experience pain, never lose sight of purpose. For purpose to be effective, there must be pain. In the athletic world, they would say, no pain, no gain. So if we think that we can go through life with purpose and no pain, then we have to think again. May I say to us, not only is there purpose with pain, but as was sung earlier, there is power in the blood. There is power in the blood. So, so watch. When you check the historical account, you'll recognize that the blood of lambs and rams and bullocks, etc., was insufficient. It took the blood of Christ. So there is power in the blood. And finally, Be patient in the process. Now watch it. It is said that sometimes it could have taken as long as four days before a person died. When they were crucified. It could have been a day. But as the individual hung on the cross, we are told that they would not take down the body and they would allow the body to be there for the dogs to eat. They would allow the body to be there for the vultures cat as the person hung there unable to help themselves that is what used to happen interestingly enough the only persons that were exempt from crucifixion were ladies They didn't use to crucify ladies. Trust. Be patient in the process. God is working it out. I, I, I don't want to give you too much. Because I still want you to be able to eat your food. <laughs> but I'll say to you. That crucifixion was a painful, painful death. Jesus did it for you, for me. Let's stand together.